Are you alright? Yeah, just give me a second. Give me a week. Why? Why is this? Why? Actually, thanks for coming, by the way. Sure. Welcome to Mojo Plays. I'm Aaron. And I'm Alex. And today we're calling attention to our personal five underrated games that we feel need more love. Not every game gets the same AAA spotlight, and these are some we feel were unfairly passed over at the time of their release. If there's a game that you feel deserves way more attention, let us know your choices in the comments below. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. My number 5, Pokemon Pinball Ruby and Sapphire. I'll admit I've fallen off with the Pokemon franchise in recent years, and have only recently gotten back into catching them all, but back in the early days I would eagerly seek out any and all Pokemon content available, and by far one of my favorites, even more than the mainline games, was the Pokemon Pinball series, particularly the Ruby and Sapphire version. While the original Pokemon Pinball on the Game Boy Color felt like a great proof of concept, Ruby and Sapphire gave the spin-off title the overhaul and attention it deserved. Catching Pokemon using the pinball mechanics ended up being far more strategic and complex than it initially appears, and still manages to recapture the thrill of catching a new Pokemon without constantly searching the grass and hoping for the best. It's actually a crime this series never got any more entries, but we've got almost a dozen mystery dungeons. My number five, Triangle Strategy. But I needn't face it alone. I would ask each of you where you think we should go and why. Tactical RPGs are a dime a dozen these days. So what separates this low fantasy epic from your average Fire Emblem? The characters aren't exactly genre defining, the combat doesn't reinvent the wheel, and the English voiceover leaves a lot to be desired. Ancient knowledge should never be discarded. So why recommend it? Short answer, the writing. The narrative here is so tightly constructed, so brilliantly paced, and tackles politics, war, religion, and enslavement with much more care than you expect from a JRPG. It was honestly engrossing, especially with its branching stories and choices that held major consequences. Square Enix might be making all the wrong choices as of late, but hopefully they'll wise up and realize they've got a real gem on their hands here. This ain't what we planned for. Let's get out of here. My number four, Rumble Racing. Go, go, go! Anyone familiar with this channel will hear me lament the open worldification of recent arcade racers. But back on the PS2, the genre was in its prime and one of my favorites to kick back and spend the weekend with was undoubtedly Rumble Racing. Combining elements of not only classic arcade racing, but also Mario Kart style power-ups and a Tony Hawk style trick system in which you could perform aerial acrobatics with your vehicle for additional speed boosts. There was something simplistically satisfying about memorizing the many tracks and unlocking increasingly outlandish vehicles. Much like one of my other favorite arcade racers, there have been numerous attempts to recapture this style, but none have managed to nail the formula the way Visceral Games, yes the Dead Space Visceral Games, did on the PS2 with this severely underrated racing gem. Dead floor, linen, stableware, and ladies lingerie. <laughs> my number four, The Forgotten City. Uh, salve friend, I'm Galerius. Mind telling me who you are and what you were doing in the Shrine of Proserpina? Speaking of exquisite writing, from a Skyrim mod all the way to a fully fledged title, this game takes the time loop mechanic seen in so many other games and makes wonders with it. All held together by a gripping story that needs to be experienced by everyone. The numerous ways in which players can take advantage of traveling back to the past to further their investigation and overcome obstacles is expertly handled while the dialogue choices, side quests, and ancient Roman aesthetic are a delight to explore. 
to the extent that discovering each and every ending is required gaming. For a debut title, this is marvellous, and I can't wait to see how the developers build on this foundation going forward. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Come on, we have to go. Mine number three, Oxenfree. <laughs> Jonas? Hello? Dear Tell everyone. Although at first glance, Oxenfree doesn't appear as anything more than another side-scrolling indie project from a first-time studio. But once you start the adventure of a group of teens stranded on an island filled with increasingly spooky and aggressive otherworldly entities, it's hard to put it down. You wouldn't think a game told from a 2D perspective could manage to be creepy or unsettling, but as the story progresses and you become more attached thanks to the amazing and realistic dialogue interactions, it rises above what could have easily been a B-movie grade concept into a tale that keeps you guessing until the very end. The clever dialogue tree and use of the old school radio to contact and open portals to the other side is exquisite. The sequel cannot get here soon enough. It is so nice to hear you two finding the sunny side of all this. We are. Well, he is. We both are. Don't let her fool you. My number three, Contradiction. Ah, this might come in handy. Finding a good FMV game is a needle in a haystack type of deal. Some are shoddy and poorly put together, while others lean towards self-indulgence to such an extent you'd swear they were going for an Oscar. Which is why it's such a joy to find something as brilliantly self-aware and cheesy as Contradiction. As a detective investigating a small English village following a murder, players have to put together the greater story by finding contradictions in the statements made by every suspect. Just when you think it'd be on the verge of becoming tedious, it throws in a crazy cult and pure meme material just for good measure. Who said that? Just a question. I didn't think I was in the running. It was Ryan, wasn't it? I am in no position to say. My number two, Alan Wake. The loose sheets of paper were pages from a manuscript entitled Departure. That was the name I planned to use for the next novel I had never gotten started. I was named the author. I hadn't written it. I couldn't remember writing it. Heavily inspired by the works of Stephen King, Alan Wake and his search for his wife in a small mountain town, becoming increasingly overrun by demonic shadow creatures, became the basis for nearly all of Remedy's increasingly outlandish and complicated narratives. Even with your trusty flashlight always in hand and pockets full of Energizer batteries, yeah, in-game advertising was a big thing in this game, the title still managed to be intensely creepy. It's a mixture of horror and action that hit all the right marks for me as I attempted to unravel a mystery that has been ambiguous for over a decade. Alan Wake 2 is by far one of my most anticipated games of 2023, and I may have verbally squealed at its reveal trailer a couple years ago. Okay, I definitely did. It's not a lie. It's an ocean. My number two, Ratchet Deadlocked. Greetings, hero, and welcome to Dreadzone. Rest assured, you are now far beyond the reach of hope. There will be no rescues, no pardons, no possibility of escape. I completely agree with what everyone has said about Rift Apart. It's the best Ratchet and Clank experience to date. However, in regards to my favorite title from previous generations, it's undoubtedly Ratchet's time as an intergalactic gladiator. The story is certainly more self-contained and is lacking the usual side characters, but when it comes to weapons, sense of humor, challenge, and the thrill of shooting down giant robots in the ultimate cosmic blood sport, it can't be beaten. Plus, the armor is top tier. Hey, I'm all about the cosmetics, all right? My number one, Enslaved Odyssey to the West. You put this on me. Let me explain. Get this thing off, or I'm gonna rip your head off. No. 
No. Years before we would explore the post-apocalypse with Joel and Ellie, we were battling the robot uprising with Monkey and Trip. A modern retelling of the Chinese literary classic Journey to the West, Ninja Theory managed to pull together talent that would make some modern blockbusters blush, with the king of mocap Andy Serkis bringing Monkey to life and a script by Alex Garland and a vibrant, colorful, apocalyptic world when the rest of the video game industry was obsessed with brown and gray environments. Odyssey to the West is full of exciting set pieces and combat that's both punchy and impactful. Plus, every encounter ends with a close-up of Monkey's rage-filled face surrounded by machine scrap that is glorious to watch every single time. One of my favorite video games of all time, it will unfortunately never receive its planned sequel because none of you played it when it was released. Excuse us a moment. Are you gonna put your fingers in your ears? Did you just try to get me killed? My number one, Fuga, Melodies of Steel. Even though there's a sequel on the way, if there's one title that deserves a boost in popularity, it's the one about the cat war orphans taking down the Anthro Third Reich in a giant sentient tank. I love Japan. Believe it or not, this is actually a tactical RPG, with a combat cycle that I never grew tired of. Every fluffy, traumatized resident of the monstrous tank brings something new to the battle, while having just enough personality to make them endearing. At least to the extent that it will give you pause when given the choice to sacrifice one of them in order to power a Deus Ex super cannon that helps you take down any of the bosses in one hit. Because that's an actual mechanic in this game, and it is as horrifyingly gripping as it sounds. Also, the music is breathtaking. <laughs> Looking at the year differences between what we consider underrated, I suddenly feel very, very old. Let us know what showdown you'd like to see us do next, down in the comments. I, um, I'm gonna go lay down. Are you okay? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips for Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.